falcons, common name for them as long wings. Uh, basically, if you just see as they sit there, they've got the long pointy wings, which sort of same level as the tail. The Harris hawk sitting at the back are what we call short wings. Quite rounded wings, much longer tail. And then the third category is where your buzzards and eagles come in, which is a broad wing. The falcons are the fastest. The one stretching her wings there, that's the peregrine. Uh, they've now got them accurately timed, stooping at speeds accurately timed at 217 miles an hour. Now, yeah, you know, that makes them by far the fastest things in nature. Most of these birds, especially the daytime birds, do have exceptionally good eyesight, and the peregrine has the best. Good weather, when she's flying around here to reasonable height, she can see a pigeon sitting on Scarborough Castle. It's a pigeon four miles away. Now, that is eyesight that it's hard for us to begin to comprehend. Right, the peregrine, we're going to fly her, and with this cold, windy, we're not going to get any great height out of her. But, you know, we'll get her to get a bit of exercise, fly her, and I'll be swinging a lure. So you want to be a little bit away from me so you're not getting clonked around the head with a piece of leather with a bit of chick tied to it. <laughs> and that swinging the lure is to sort of give her a really good workout. The whole point of that is that simulating her grabbing a bird in the air. And it gets to be a game with us. If she grabs it, she's won. And then she gets her reward. But obviously I want to make sure she gets as much exercise as properly to really keep her fit. So we'll just see how many passes we can get before we give it to her. It'll be on the ground and when she's feeding on the ground you can get closer in then. And she'll just eat the bit that's on the lure and then I've got the nice chunk of half quail for her to uh, have a really good Sunday lunch. Pay a fortune in a French restaurant for a meal like this. <laughs> I'm sure we're, we're flying for a half a quail. <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful feel this for being able to fly, especially for the falcons, nice and open. It does catch the wind from every direction up here. And the last sort of two and a half weeks, it's been from every direction, east, north, west, south. So, we'll start getting rid of all the gubbins, so all this has to come off. Uh, she normally just has a good scoot around and a good look, see what's going on. And then, uh, as long as she's coping with this wind, which she should do, but yeah, we've just had such a break with this weather. I guess. After the hood's being on, she'll take a bit of time just to sort of have a look around, get her eyes adjusted to the light. Usually before she's ready to go, she'll have a good shake and rouse. Anyway, there she goes. So if you move back a little bit now, so as you, she'll, uh, if you go down by the things there, so that when I'm swinging the lure, right. it means that she uh, can work out which way to make her approaches in the wind. Yeah, she's working out wind directions and where she can crank in using the wind to her advantage for the fastest approach. Swinging a lure does take a lot of practice to get. <laughs> the best thing is when you start is to uh, go off somewhere quietly so not many people see you wrapping it around your neck and smacking yourself <laughs> in the face. Because <laughs> so obviously the timing is, you, you know, if you get this wrong, I mean, you could break the bird's wing or. Oh. <laughs> it's like being a matador with a bullfighter. <laughs> a couple more passes and then I'll put the lure down so that's a habit <laughs> she's had a pretty good workout for saying she's not done much in the last two weeks love to be here but I definitely don't throw the lure down when she's got the wind with her what have you got on your lure? it's just a couple of chick legs chick so legs oh, there's always a reward on the lure yeah. so it's, it's making it as 
realistic as possible so that uh, it's the bird should be <laughs> trying to catch. It, so there's something for her to have. Usually I just put quail wings on, so something for plucking and everything. But uh, yeah, that can take quite some time. So I've just Gorgeous. put those on for her to finish quickly and has had half a quail, which I'll use as the pickup piece. She's done ever so well. <laughs> Didn't take her too long to get her breath back. But you know, when it gets fairly strict breeze like this, you know, she is one of the more reliable ones. Oh. A couple of the Harris Hawks would just say, sod this, I'm going <laughs> off into the trees over there. <laughs> yeah, you can get closer now. Okay. Well, that, yeah, and that's what falconry is about. It's not having birds or pets or anything. It's getting out and flying them as best you can. Just turn the lure over because it's always piece on either side. Mm. See this ground training is the critical part of these birds. If you do this wrong and she thinks you're just going to steal food away from her, that's yeah. it. I've got this now, I'm gone. Yeah. With this, you know, they'll pluck off quite a bit of the feather. Yeah. But you know, some, uh, they'll eat a fair amount. Fed, fed well. The food goes into a crop which is like a pouch above the stomach. Uh, the hawks and falcons and eagles are very, very efficient at digesting all the bone they eat. So the next day when they have their casting, it'll just be the compressed feather or fur of what they've eaten the day before. Owls are different from the others. They don't have a crop. Everything goes straight to their stomach. And they're not as efficient at digesting the bone. It's a handy part of the daily routine. When the, she'll have done a casting by the time I take her out tomorrow morning, you just quickly check. If the bird's getting a bit of an infection or dietary problem, there might be uh, sort of mucus on the uh, casting or a bit of a smell. Normally it dries out very quickly, absolutely innocuous, nothing as obnoxious as a cat's fur ball. And that's one of the quick daily checks. The weighing ritual is just making sure her weight's right. But if a bird does get sick and they've got their ranges of bugs that they can get just like we do, they have a very sudden drastic loss in weight. So before you'll see any you know, sort of sign of a problem, you can pick it up from the weight and uh, start getting something sorted. Right, shall we get out of this wind? Shall we head back down? As we go back down that steep bit, the loose gravel, just be careful of your footing. Do you have to put the jessie back on her now or do you well, not need I don't to, bother with it. Don't need to, I suspect. 